Hi, my name is Chelsea Bum. I am the head of construction here at One Energy. And in our last video, uh, we learned about the NIOSH hierarchy of controls. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the hazards that we see here at One Energy and throughout the wind industry. So today, we're gonna to be talking about back pain. And that's really broad, but we're going to kind of break that down into a much smaller category. So this is a tower section. It's a very bad drawing. I will apologize until the end of time for my artwork, but this is what a tower section looks like. And it weighs about 100,000 pounds. So this comes in on a truck and then the truck self offloads or you use cranes to get it basically off of the truck. So when you do that, what's typical in industry is you install what we call cribbing underneath the tower. And what's typical in industry is they use railroad ties. So if you're looking at the cross section, so if this is our tower section, what they'll do is they will put a railroad tie here and here before they lower this tower section onto the ground. Then some big strong people are gonna move railroad ties here. And then when they lower this tower section onto it, those railroad ties kind of break and crack. So the way that these railroad ties are moved and put into place are through manual labor. I've seen it on job sites. I've seen people do it all across the industry. Sometimes they'll put softeners, what you call softeners between the tower section and those railroad ties. Things like straw bales, carpet. Um, there are all kinds of different kinds of softeners that you can put um, in between the tower section and the railroad ties. But ultimately, regardless, you're gonna see these, these strong people carrying 50 to 200 pounds worth of railroad ties on their shoulders to toss them into place. And often what you'll hear of are lower back or just back injuries in general. So we talked about this when we started doing self-perform, how we can make this process better. And not just that, but you're, you're causing potential injuries for people on sites. And in addition to that, you're also causing damage to the tower where that paint is getting scuffed. And so later on in the process, wherever that paint needs to be repaired, when you're ready to basically start erecting this tower, you're gonna have to put somebody underneath that load to paint it. And that's not optimal for anyone. So what One Energy's done we've developed <laughs> this piece of dunnage. And it's very, very simple. This is basically a fire hose and inside it, we stuff it with rubber pellets. You can see some of the rubber pellets falling out. At the ends, they're riveted so that the rubber pellets in theory will not fall out. This particular piece seems to need another rivet or two. But what we'll do, is when we have a tower section that comes in. We use a piece of equipment to slide, like a forklift or a skid steer, something of that range, to slide a crane mat underneath the tower section with two railroad ties lengthwise here. Then we pad here, here, and down here at the bottom with three pieces of dunnage. Now, when that tower section comes down onto those railroad ties, you're gonna see 100,000 pounds sit nicely on this, this rubber piece of, of dunnage that we've created. You're not gonna see paint damage, and you're not gonna see any lifting above 10 pounds, which is what those pieces of rubber dunnage weigh. And so we've eliminated a lot of potential injuries or decrease the threat of those potential activities by thinking of a new way to do this that's smarter. Think smarter, you know, work smarter, not harder. That's what they always say. And so somewhere in the triangle between engineering controls and administrative controls is kind of where this falls. Thank you for joining us for the safety minute.